Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to go over the eight ways that you can currently get a yield in DeFi. Now, after looking at so many different projects, I've come to the conclusion that there are really only eight ways you can get a yield right now in DeFi. Now, of course, there are so many different projects that incorporate these eight different methods, but I'm going to give you eight examples that show you where the yield actually comes from, because I think that's going to help your understanding when you're analyzing new DeFi projects or just explaining DeFi to others. For me personally, when I'm looking at a new project and I'm deciding whether I want to create a video about it or invest in it or something else, uh, one of the first things I consider is where's the yield actually coming from? The biggest question here, of course, is, is the yield sustainable? So to help make this more clear, I'm going to go over eight projects that are very representative of these eight yield methods. Some of the projects are, of course, going to be very popular and some you might not have heard of. So definitely stay tuned to see the eight different ways you can get a yield in DeFi. Now let's just jump right into it. So the first way you can get a yield in DeFi is probably one of the most common ways, and that's by supplying capital on a money market like Compound or Aave. So right now you can see I'm on Compound. Now Compound is a lending and borrowing platform. And you can see on the left here, I can supply any of these assets that other users can come in and borrow. So for example, you can see I have about 1.3 ETH in this wallet and I can lend that out and now others can borrow that ETH and I'll receive a fee of 0.25% APY. Now there are of course a ton of different platforms that are using borrowing and lending to generate a yield for users. One common example of that is Anchor, which I know is very popular in the Terra ecosystem. Now I think most of you are going to be pretty familiar with how borrowing and lending works, so just to jump right into number two, which is swap fees. So number two is swap fees, and you can see here I'm on Uniswap's page. So essentially with Uniswap, a user can put up their liquidity, and anytime there's a transaction made against their liquidity, they get a small swap fee for providing the liquidity service. So you can see right here, I'm on the Uniswap pool page. This is where you would provide liquidity liquidity. I'm actually on Optimism, which is an L2. If you're not familiar with that, I did just release a video, which I'll link in the top right. But you can see here that I'm providing liquidity to the DAI ETH pair. So right now you can see I have an active position here for DAI ETH. So every time there's a swap within the range that I have set, I get a 0.3% fee from the value of that swap. We can click on this position and you'll see a little bit more. This is just an $173 test liquidity position and you can see I have about 83 cents of unclaimed fees. Now again, I think this is going to be one of the methods that users are most familiar with, so I don't wanna to spend too much time on this and I wanna jump right into number three. So the third way to get a yield in DeFi is through proof of stake staking. Now you can either do this yourself or you can go with a service provider like Lido. But you can see here, essentially with Lido, you basically stake ETH on the ETH2 validation network. What that means is your ETH is being used to verify transactions on the network. And if you verify transactions correctly, you get an ETH bonus. And if you uh, verify transactions incorrectly, you get something called slashing. Uh, what that means is you lose some of the position you have staked. Now Lido, of course, does this for you. You can see there's $1.7 billion staked and total rewards paid out is now 23.6 million. There are, of course, several proof of stake networks that you can stake your assets on. Uh, you can see we have Ethereum 2.0 there on the left, which is getting a 5.4% APR. Again, that's for validating transactions. And on the right, you can see Terra is giving a 3.1% APR. Now, of course, I think a lot of you are familiar with proof of stake rewards. And what's interesting to see is these are really becoming the backbone in a lot of different yield products. So we're seeing the Lido staked ETH token uh, getting used in a ton of different uh, DeFi apps and users are able to get a yield by holding that token. Now moving over to the fourth way it's possible to get a yield in DeFi, it's actually through inflationary rewards. So inflationary rewards are basically rewards paid out by the underlying project itself. Um, in this case, I'm going to use Curve as an example. So Curve is a swap platform, uh, somewhat similar to Uniswap. Uh, and you can see here that on the left, you have base APYs for different pools. So uh, for a stablecoin pool, SUSD, you can see the base APY is 1%. Now Curve is basically saying that that 1% APY isn't going to be enough to incentivize users to provide liquidity on their platform. So what they then decide to do is say that we're going to pay users a bonus in the native Curve governance token CRV if they provide liquidity on our platform. Now this is really the main way that most projects bootstrap liquidity, uh, but it's of course obvious that it's not really sustainable. The thing about inflationary rewards is you're really paying people to use your platform when they probably wouldn't otherwise use it. The goal 
goal behind Curve providing these inflationary rewards is that they believe that by the time the rewards conclude, they'll be considered you know, really critical infrastructure in DeFi and that people will use their platform whether the return on their investment or their deposit is high enough or not. You can see here that 1% stablecoin pool I was talking about. You can see they're incentivizing it with the CRV token, and they're giving users up to 4.8% total APY if they use that pool, and a lot of that's coming from the CRV token. This, of course, dilutes current curve holders, um, so this is an inflationary reward, and the goal here is that platform growth outpaces the inflation that they're creating in the market. Now, Curve is, of course, a very reputable platform, and what they're doing definitely makes sense. Uh, but when we see new pump and dumps arrive on the market, uh, this is basically how they're attracting a lot of liquidity. They're basically incentivizing people to deposit into their pools, and they're giving them huge amounts of inflationary rewards to stay in the pool. When it's done in that manner, that's definitely not sustainable. A great example of this is Iron Finance, which was, of course, a huge collapse um, when the, the bubble actually burst. With all of that said, let's move on to the fifth way you can get a yield in DeFi. So the fifth way to generate a true yield in DeFi is through protocol fees. Now, one of my favorite examples of this is Liquidity. Uh, Liquidity is a place where you can get a loan on your ETH that you deposit. And to do that, you have to pay a very small fee to the platform to actually take out that loan. You can see here there's about $1.5 billion in TVL, so definitely a lot of interest in this project. But um, I'll just move over to this page here, Incentive for Stakers. So the Liquidity project has a token called LQTY or Liquidity uh, itself. Um, and this token actually has no governance rights. It's not a governance token. It's simply a fee accrual token. Now this token you can stake on their website and you actually get a pro rata share of the borrowing and redemption fees from the platform itself. Now this is of course very fascinating that we have a true cash flow token. Um, there's several other examples of this as well. One of them is Frax's governance token FXS and another one is Sushi. Sushi is a swap platform like Uniswap, but you can stake the Sushi token and you can get a small share of the platform fees as well. So just to go over to one of Liquidity's front ends, we can see about 6 million Liquidity is staked, and right now that's generating about a 10% APR from protocol fees. What's very cool about this is that that APR is paid out in ETH and a US dollar stablecoin, so you're not getting it in the native token, so it's not an inflationary reward, which is of course very cool. Let's move on to the sixth way that you can get a yield in DeFi. Now, the sixth way you can get a yield in DeFi is by using options contracts. So there are a couple platforms that support this. One of my favorites, which I've covered on the channel and I will link in the top right, is Ribbon Finance. Ribbon essentially allows you to sell covered call options or covered put options to generate a yield. So the goal of this platform is to sell very out of the money options. So they're very unlikely to hit their strike price. And if they don't hit their strike price, you just get a yield because you sold that option contract to someone for a premium price. So Ribbon has a few different strategies where you can sell covered call or covered put options. Uh, but if you want to get right to the source of it, you can also sell options on Hedgic. So essentially with this platform, you pool your ETH or WBTC together, and that pool is used to sell options contracts to different users that want options exposure. Again, if you're not familiar with options, I do have a video covering that on the channel, which is going to be linked in the top right. Moving on to the seventh way you can get a yield in DeFi is by selling insurance. Now, one of the most popular platforms for this is Unslash Finance. Uh, basically, users pool their ETH or other asset together, and that pooled ETH is used to back insurance that the platform sells to users that want to insure different DeFi projects or protocols. You can see here on Unslash Finance's page, you can take out insurance for UST, for Compound, Uniswap, USDT, etc. And of course, users supply the capital for that. So that's another great way to get a yield on your assets in DeFi. If I go over to the supply capital page here, you can see they have something called the Spartan Bucket, which earns about a 14% APY from providing insurance to these different users. Now, what's really interesting about Unslash Finance, and you're going to see this on tons of different platforms, is that this 14% or so yield, uh, only 1.3% of that comes from selling insurance. The rest of that yield actually comes from inflationary rewards, which is really interesting. Now that is very common in this space. So you're going to see different platforms combine different methods, uh, different variations of these eight ways you can get a yield in DeFi. They're going to mix those together to get you a better yield on your assets. 
So providing capital for insurance is the seventh way. Now it's time to move over to the last way that you can get a yield in DeFi today. So the eighth way that you can get a yield in DeFi is through arbitrage transactions. Now, as far as I know, Stabilize is one of the few projects that actually does this for you automatically. Uh, but you can see here they have several, several different pools of pegged assets. So the best way to explain this is by looking at this ETH pool. It holds basically three variations of ETH. And what it does is arbitrage the price between those three assets. So the theory goes that if ETH is worth $2,000, all of these other pegged assets that are meant to be pegged to ETH should be worth $2,000 as well. If one of the assets drops down in price, say to $1,900, this protocol basically buys up all of that pegged asset at $1,900 with the entire pool, and then it sells it once that price uh, goes back up to the market price of ETH. So this is a really fascinating product. Um, I don't know of other services that provide this arbitrage for you automatically. It's fairly less common because the thinking goes, if there is an arbitrage opportunity out there in the market, it makes better sense for a bot or service to just execute that arbitrage themselves as opposed to doing it for the end user. So not something that's super common, but obviously very novel and interesting. I do want to point out that Furrow Combo allows users to create flash loans and arbitrage different assets, uh, but it's not done automatically. So this is a yield you'd have to generate yourself. So those are the eight ways you can get a yield in DeFi. Now, obviously, in the long term, this could all change. There could be new strategies that come up. But of all the projects I've looked at, these are really the only eight ways that different platforms get a yield for the end user. As I mentioned before, a lot of projects are going to be combining different strategies to get users the highest yield. And at this point, most platforms are paying out inflationary rewards, which uh, for better or worse is happening and will increase your yield, at least on paper. If this video was helpful for you, I would very much appreciate if you liked it. Uh, please subscribe and hit the notification bell. And if this video would be a great explainer to share with different friends that are wondering about DeFi, uh, please feel free to share it with them as well. With that said, thank you all so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you all in the next video.